Elections, right. They don't always go the way we hope, do they? Nope, they sure don't. And sometimes it can leave us feeling, well, a little lost. Definitely. So today we're going to take a look at this blog post from the Ingomoo coaching app. Oh, yeah. All about navigating that post-election disappointment. You know, finding your footing again, getting your well-being back on track when things feel a bit shaky. It can be tough for sure. It can. And one of the things that Ingomu really emphasizes is, you know, those feelings we have, disappointment, frustration, maybe even a bit of anger, those are all valid. Mm -hmm. And actually, a really important first step is just letting ourselves feel those things. You know, it's so tempting to just try to push it down. Like, it didn't affect you. I've definitely been there. I think we all have. Yeah. But I have found that ignoring those feelings, it never really works out in the long run, does it? Not really. It's like the Ingobu Post says, like, trying to hold a beach ball underwater. Right. Eventually, it's going to pop back up. Exactly. And sometimes at the worst possible moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is kind of a surprising next step from Ingomu. They suggest stepping away from the media for a bit. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It seems a little counterintuitive. Right. Because we want to stay informed. We want to know what's going on. But... Okay. But they make a really good point about how that constant stream of news and everyone's opinions, especially yeah. these days, 24-7, everywhere you look, yeah, it can actually make it harder to process what you're feeling. It can kind of amp up the anxiety. Right. So you're saying like tuning out the news can actually be a good thing. It can be. Think of it as giving yourself some space, like creating a little breathing room for your own emotions. Okay. They had some interesting ideas in the blog. You know, like actually setting boundaries, like designated times to check the news. No. Or even having like no news hours. Interesting. Some people even use apps that track and limit their screen time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It can be really helpful. It's like hitting the reset button, right? <laughs> On your mental state. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're acknowledging our feelings, taking a break from all the news and opinions. But what about that sense of powerlessness that can sometimes creep in after an election? It's a really common feeling. And this is where the Ingo Mood post gets really interesting. They suggest action. Action. Yeah, action. It might seem counterintuitive, but doing something, anything that aligns with your values, mm -hmm. it can actually be incredibly therapeutic. That's interesting. You'd think taking action would keep you focused on the things that you couldn't control, right? You might think that, but it's more about shifting your focus forward. Ingo Mu points out that sometimes the most powerful thing we can do is channel our energy into something positive. Okay. Things like volunteering for a cause you care about or getting involved in community initiatives. Okay, so you're not dwelling on what was. You're looking ahead to what can be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how that shift in perspective can really make a difference. It does. Helping others, making a difference in your community. It reminds me of that quote, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Gandhi. That's a perfect example of how action can be healing, not just for others, but for ourselves, too. Mm. And I think, you know, beyond that immediate impact, it really helps cultivate a sense of agency. Mm -hmm. yeah. It reminds us that even when we're faced with outcomes we don't like, we're not powerless. Right. So we've got accepting our feelings, stepping back from the media overload, channeling our energy into action. It's all starting to come together. But I'm wondering, how do we actually build that resilience you know, the kind of strength that helps you weather any storm, election, or otherwise. Now, that's where things get even more interesting. The Ngomu Post touches on something called holistic coaching. And it might just be the key to unlocking that deeper level of well-being. This holistic coaching thing, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's not just about treating stress, mm -hmm. you know, like when you're already feeling overwhelmed. It's more about looking at your whole life. Oh, okay. Your thoughts, your habits even your environment. Wow. And it uses all of that to build lasting well-being. So it's not just a quick fix. So instead of putting a Band-Aid on the problem, you're getting to the root of it. Exactly. I, I like that. So in the Ingo Wu post, they break it down into some really practical benefits. And the first one they talk about is building emotional resilience. Okay. It's like building up those inner muscles that help you bounce back from tough situations. So, like, are we talking about lifting weights but for your emotions? Uh-huh. Kind of. It's more about developing the skills to manage those difficult emotions in healthier ways. Okay. So instead of getting swept away by disappointment, you learn to navigate those feelings with more awareness. And the post mentions things like guided visualizations and positive affirmations. Yeah, I've heard of those. Yeah, but they also mention something called cognitive restructuring. Cognitive restructuring. 
That sounds intense. It might sound complex, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Right. It's mm -hmm. basically about challenging those negative thought patterns that can keep us stuck. Oh. So right. let's say you're thinking this election was a disaster and things will never get better. Right. Cognitive restructuring encourages you to actually examine that thought. Oh, interesting. Is it really true that everything is terrible? Will things never get better? So you're shifting your perspective to a more realistic view. Exactly. Yeah. And you're starting to create a little bit of space between your thoughts and your reactions. Okay, that makes sense. But it seems like it would take a lot of effort. It can take practice, for sure. But a holistic coach can guide you through that process. Right. And that actually brings us to another benefit of this approach. Fostering a growth mindset. Okay, growth mindset. I've heard that term before, but I'm not sure I totally get it. Yeah, think of it like this. A growth mindset is all about seeing challenges and setbacks as opportunities for learning and growth. Okay. So instead of getting bogged down by disappointment, you're asking yourself, what can I learn from this experience? How can I use this to become stronger? So you're taking those negative experiences and turning them into something positive. Exactly. Finding the lesson in the letdown, you could say. Yeah. And a holistic coach can help you cultivate that mindset by helping you reframe those challenges, set achievable goals, and even just celebrate the small victories along the way. Okay. It's about recognizing that setbacks are a part of life, but they don't have to define us. Right, right. They don't have to hold us back. I like that. Yeah, it's a much more empowering way to look at things. I'm starting to see how all these pieces fit together. It's yeah. like you're building this whole arsenal of tools to deal with life's curveballs, right? Exactly, exactly. But is there anything else that this holistic coaching offers? Oh, there's more. This is where it gets even more tailored. Okay. The Inga Moo post talks about creating a personal wellness plan. Oh, wow. It's kind of like a roadmap to well-being that's designed just for you. That's amazing. But what does that actually entail? Like, is it super detailed? Do I have to schedule exactly what I'm going to eat and when I'm going to exercise? No, no, not necessarily. It's more about identifying your own individual needs and goals. Okay, so, like, what kinds of things are we talking about? It could include stress management techniques, figuring out the routines that work best for you, setting goals to keep you focused and motivated. Okay. It's about discovering what truly helps you thrive, not just survive. So it's kind of like having a customized guide to navigating your well-being. Exactly. It's all about finding what works for you. I'm really liking this holistic approach. It makes a lot of sense. And there's one more piece that I think you'll especially appreciate, given your interest in mindfulness. Oh. Holistic coaching often integrates mind-body practices like yoga, breath work, and meditation. Well, you know me. Always up for exploring those. So many holistic coaches incorporate these practices into their sessions to help you cultivate inner peace, manage stress, and just boost your emotional well-being in general. So it's not just about changing your thoughts. It's about changing your whole state of being. Exactly. Yeah. I can see how that would be incredibly beneficial, especially during those times when you're feeling really stressed or uncertain. Absolutely. And the beauty of holistic coaching is that it recognizes we're all unique. Right. What works for one person might not work for another. Sure. It's all about finding those strategies and practices that truly resonate with you. It's about figuring out what works for you. Yeah. This holistic coaching idea, it's really intriguing. I think so, too. It sounds like it could be really helpful for navigating not just post-election disappointment, but any of life's challenges. I think so, too. And it's a great reminder that there are so many tools and resources out there to support our well-being. Okay, so before we wrap things up, I want to kind of bring it back to some of those other helpful tips that we talked about from the Ingomu post. Oh, yeah. Great idea. Acknowledging our feelings, taking a media break, taking action, connecting with others. Those are all so important. Exactly. It's like we've got this whole toolkit of strategies to help us move forward. And I think that's a great segue into the final part of our deep dive where we'll bring all these insights together and explore how you can apply them to your own life. It really strikes me that these tools, you know, from the Ngomu post, mm -hmm. they aren't just for post-election blues, are they? No, not at all. This is like a toolkit for dealing with any of life's challenges. Exactly. Personal setbacks, professional hurdles. It's all about building that resilience, you yeah. know. So for everyone listening, let's recap what we've learned from this deep dive into the Ngomu blog. Sounds good. First up, we talked about acknowledging those post-election feelings. Mm. The disappointment, the frustration, yeah, and really giving ourselves permission to feel those emotions instead of trying to just brush them aside. Because let's face it, 
trying to suppress those feelings just makes them stronger in the long run. Exactly. And then we dove into that idea of a media detox. Yes. Setting those boundaries with the news and social media. Right. You know, it can be so tempting to just stay glued to everything that's happening. But sometimes, honestly, disconnecting can be the healthiest thing you can do. It really can. Yeah. Especially when you need that space to process your own thoughts and emotions. Mm hmm and then we explored the power of action, <laughs> channeling that energy into positive activities. Exactly. Volunteering, getting involved in your community, pursuing a passion project. All great examples. It's a powerful reminder that even when things don't go our way, we're not powerless, we can still make a difference. Absolutely. We also talked about mindfulness and meditation. It is. Those moments of stillness and peace, it can be so helpful for managing stress and building that inner resilience. Those practices can really be a lifeline in turbulent times. For sure. And of course, we can't forget the power of connection. Absolutely. Reaching out to friends, family, support groups, people who share similar values. It makes a huge difference. It does. It reminds us that we're not alone in this. Right. We're all in this together. Exactly. And then finally, we explored that really interesting concept of holistic coaching. Yes. This whole person approach to well-being. It's a game changer for so many people. It seems like it, yeah. Building emotional resilience, fostering a growth mindset, creating those personalized wellness plans. It's all about finding what works for you. Exactly. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. Wow. We covered a lot in this deep dive. <laughs> we did. But I think the key takeaway is that we have tools and perspectives to navigate not just post-election disappointment, but any of life's ups and downs. And that's a really empowering message. It is. So as we wrap things up, I want to leave you with this. What's one small step you can take today to channel your energy into something positive? Ooh, good question. Something aligned with your values. I like that. Maybe it's reaching out to a friend, volunteering for a cause. Maybe it's just taking a few minutes to practice mindfulness. All great ideas. And if you're interested in exploring that whole holistic coaching thing, yeah. I highly recommend checking out the Ingomu app. They have some great resources there. They do. So thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And until next time, remember to keep learning, keep growing, and keep shining your light.